Welcome to the map East Mnet in the Battle for Middle Earth 1 online battle arena for the patch 2.22 in a 2v2 match between Rohan and Gondor versus Gondor and Isengard. So the Uryx leading forward to catch up those soldiers as soon as they potentially can. Warchant is going to be used and they will now hunt those soldiers. And they can't fight this so he's gonna run to this land to destroy this slaughterhouse over here. In the meantime, at the top side, Gondor is trying to defend the settlements against the Rohan peasants with the Hobbit and one soldier. He was grabbing this one. So on this map, each player has actually the chance to get up to two settlements in total. Um, I mean, actually not. He has only one settlement over here, I believe. So that's the war spot to be in when you play Isengard, because you have only one settlement. The good thing is, it's right in front of your castle, so it's going to be kind of easy to be protected. Pippin is going to be cloaking, so he will be invisible for the Uruks. And good, oh, he's going to get visible again to destroy this slaughterhouse. He will be able to take it down. Soldiers will be taken down right after. And now Hobbit is trying to run for his life. Otherwise, the Uruks will bring him to the Isengard faction. So he needs to press S, move, press S, move. Can he get cloaked? No, he can't. He will be taken down. In the meantime, we get to see more and more peasants from the Rohan player, Latino. His ally, by the way, is... Gavin, they're against Jess, and his ally top left is Ryan, okay? Gondor Rohan versus Gondor Isengard. Okay, Hobbit will be revived. Um, this player going for the steeple. This player already went for the steeple, but a bit too early, in my opinion. And he needs to pay a lot for the Gondor Knights, because he has in total only three farms in the bees, which is, you know, not the best for the discount of the food bonus. But he was able to protect himself. That's very good. I like this one. Okay, we will get to see Rohirrim warriors very soon. Hobbit is going to get cloaked this time. Beautiful. Lambrimil is going to be built. Isengard's eco not looking too hot. And he needs pikemen as soon as possible. Now, Gondor Rohan is a very strong duo. Because they actually can go for heroes like Boromir, Faramir. And then later on they will have Theorin. So these combos from Gondor are going to be very strong. And power point wise we have... Land from Rhinelene, Latino, obviously, with the draft, and Gavin with the land. So for that reason, he was able to cover this land from his opponent. That's why you don't usually pick land in a 2v2 when your opponent has also Gondor or Mordor. Boromir hitting very fast, hitting very hard, knocking down those Uruks up on the ground, just like in the films, you know what I'm saying? Boom, boom, boom. He's the captain of Gondor. I bet he's gonna get away and look just like in the films boot just like in the films he's saving pippin from the from the uruks you know all right rohirrim against knights of gondor they will go back now to the castle to the well to recover in the meantime the beast is not looking too hot for gondor because he was losing the settlement over here and we will get to see more and more uruks now this gondor will need the assistance from his ally Hobbit is going to be taken down. Boromir wasn't able to save him, but the good thing is Boromir got level 4. It's a very important milestone to reach for the captain of Gondor because of his leadership. Land will be used, instantly covered. The land is kind of bad for Isengard because in the lead game, Eisen will use the rain, and when enemy steps on the land from Gondor, his ally, they will get leadership back. Steeple almost level 2. We have Faramir now on the, on the way. And he needs to still fill up the bees. Maybe it's a bit too early for Faramir. Maybe he should have been building up some settlements in the bees. Because his eco is not looking too hard. Gondor was able to take this one. There is a troll creep. Which Boromir can easily creep. And then get also one more settlement over here. The same also on the opposite side of the map. And no lords upon the field yet. Lords is essential against double good. Because they, they will have lots of heroes upon the field. Like Theorin, Boromir, Faramir. And your lords can check one of them. Faramir. Horn. Actually quite long range. He will be able to snipe those pikemen from a long distance. But the horn duration is nerfed. So you don't, you're not stunning them for a long duration anymore. So that means when you are far away from them. While you stun them. By the time you reach out to them. They will be kind of freed. Pikemen everywhere. That's good. Hobbit from Latino is coming to kill some workers. Boom. 
They actually need two hits because they are on the Alvin Wood. They have also armor leadership. <laughs> That's why he's not able to one-shot them at this point. Land is also making them. Actually, Land is like very good here for Aizen because the Land, the Alvin Wood, summons trees. And with the trees, the Lumberville workers have better environment, you know, to cut the trees for the lumber mill. So he was not crippling this Mary in front of the bees. Boromir is here. I think he's going for Boromir. Now he's going to cripple one of the Rohirrim, actually. Lord's hitting very hard. But heavy armor is going to be purchased now. Lord's is level 2. Again, level 3 is going to make him very dangerous. And he's also a great counter to Boromir. Because level 3 will unlock the Carnage, which also grants him immunity to knockback. So Boromir can't disable him. And in a one-on-one -on -one situation, Boromir will always lose when Lourdes is level 3. Now, it's kind of... I want to see this with the 4 Gondor. Boromir also will get more damage. But I think still then, Lourdes just hits different, you know? Soldiers healed up. The creep is still remaining on the field. This one has been taken. This Gondor is looking quite strong. Aizen has 1,000 in the bank. Has Armory up on the field. He will get every upgrade potentially. And his ally, Gondor, has heal and Alvin Wood. Has 1,000. He went for Blades and Heavy Armor. Latino, the Rohan player, went also for up all upgrades. Forge Blades and Heavy Armor. He has one power point after the heal and draft. And last but not least, Gavin. He has two power points in the bank after the Alvin summon. Alvin Alliance, not Alvin Alliance. Alvin Wood summon. And he is now going for the combos. But his eco not looking too hot. But it's good, good enough for him to make three combos, get them fire arrows, and he will have leadership from Boromir and also from Faramir. Now, Gon Rohan will make Theorin actually for him. So they will have in total 100% damage leadership and 80% armor. That's pretty strong. And remember, with the four Gondor, they will even have more damage leadership to kill heroes, horses, pikemen. And combos way faster. Lords only level 3. Gondor, Aizen, lack damage leadership. They have only Warchant, which is already strong enough. But Warchant is only available for a short duration. And once the Warchant is off, Gondor combos will out damage and out sustain you. Because they have double good faction. That means double heal from the spellbook too. So Faramir is creeping the Trollia. But Gondor will be able to intercept him from doing this. And he has Horge Blades, that means Faramir can't really match this. They will just burst down this layer. There is no world in which Faramir can steal the creep. Nah, he has no chance. The money will be also taken. Now, Faramir is exposed. If he doesn't pay attention, Faramir might actually die here. He's gonna go for the heal. He needs to use heal to save the Faramir. He's just trying to show his quality. Heal is gonna be used from the opposite Gondor player, but Boromir is coming. They are level 3, that means they're immune to the Horn of Gondor. And they will get away. But both players were forced to use the heal. In the meantime, Lord exposed. And he needs to use the Carnage. Now the Rohirrim have to disengage. Beautiful hit with the Carnage. But only one Rohirrim has been taken down. Now the Carnage is going to not last forever. And then they can actually recommit Bad Trample into the Pikeman combo over here. But he actually dealt hella damage to the Crossbowman behind the combo. Very good. Once you kill the, Rohir um, the Crossbowman behind the Pikeman... The combo is basically useless, you know. They can't really do much anymore. Their only firepower comes from the crossbow man behind the pikeman. Outpost will be taken by Ryan, the gunner player, to support his ally with well in statue. That's the combination of good and evil. That's why you need always to give your good ally to get the outpost control when you play evil. They have also Theoden King on the field. But don't trample into the pikeman. Boromir is handling this, no problemo. Getting closer to level 8 for the glory of Gondor to harvest the enemy for resources. Now he has three combos up on the field. All of them have fire arrows and also heavy armor. Four combos actually. But he also needs ban on them, you know. Outpost control is essential. They need to actually go for the Isengard. Because Gondor, you need to siege him first with the trebuchet or ants. Bad trample into the pikeman. Theodin is gonna get bullied and died. Yeah, in the porcupine formation, Theodin is not the tankiest hero in the game. He's actually very squishy. That's why you need to put him in a very safe spot. And killing Theodin will actually slow down the pushing progress now from the opponent team. Because he has no tower guards. And these combos are actually very vulnerable against this highly 
upgraded Knights of Gondor with the Warchant and with the statue. There is Faramir open the field. Faramir is good for sniping heroes too. There is there are two potential targets, Faramir and Boromir. But fighting around this location is always kind of risky because they have statue leadership and the well sustain. Oh, big commitment! Boromir needs to use the ability. Beautiful, Boromir is knocking them down. Boromir is going to use the For Gondor ability. Now they are shining bright like a diamond. And they will commit. Beautiful Horn of Gondor is coming. You shall not move. You can outplay this by using the Palantir, but Valentia is already used. Um, you see the duration nerf of the Horn of Gondor is kind of coming in clutch in those situations. You don't lose too much. They are committing, obviously going for the statue first. In the meantime, Rohirrim were able to destroy the well, but there is still one statue remaining. Now the four Gondor abilities on cooldown. It's not active anymore. Beautiful trampoline coming with the Knights of Gondor. Heal is coming in clutch. Faramir, Boromir, they are your targets, but the horses are demolishing everything here because there are no isolated pikemen. The tower guards in the porcupine formation. Theorin was not around there as well. Now Faramir is going to be hunted by the Knights of Gondor. Heal is going to be coming in clutch. Beautiful Theorin getting level 2, Boromir is hitting level 8, but they still will lose this fight. They need to disengage as soon as possible. There is Gandalf up on the field too. Gandalf from the Gondor player at the top left side. He has no counters as we are talking. Faramir might be free food for the wizard on his shadow fags. And he's trying to go for a blast. Gondor is trying to split up the units a little bit. He's gonna be bullied the Gandalf with the warning arrow, but he can just disengage because he's way too fast to be caught. And we have also Saruman upon the field, 4 power points in total, very close to the freezing rain. Rohan will be taking this outpost for his ally, he needs to build a well, a statue, and all of that shenanigans. Uh, Boromir and Faramir survived, that's very important. There is a Uruk on the wall of Rohan to scout what's going on. The Gunner player can now go for the siege works, but he's gonna spam more and more horses from the stable, just why not. Alan Latino has almost 3 power points in the bank after the heal and draft. He might go for the Elven Summon or for the Land. Land can be also a good choice. Because usually Aizen doesn't go for the Land himself. But the Outpost right after this construction will be immediately taken down. Because there is zero defense around this Outpost. The Statue is going to get bullied. You need to demolish this to deny your opponent experience. Lourdes is still only level 3. But he has Saruman leadership now. That's pretty good. And Isengard's Eco is pretty much untouched. That's pretty good too. The knights are chasing down the... Can they get away? The Rohirrim. Where was Gondor when Rohirrim fell? Oh, he's shooting. Oh my god. He's going now for the well. Gondor doesn't demolish. Getting lots of experience with the Rohirrim. That's pretty good. The outpost sitter has been nerfed heavily against the horseman damage. They will be able to take down the outpost in no time without protection. That's why you need to always place a pikeman. As Isengard to protect your allies outpost. Outpost fully destroyed. Now this Gondor is coming. But here, they have also lots of leadership. There comes the big war chant. Theoden needs to be careful. Farami, Boromir have to be careful. Saruman has to be even more careful. Because the statue is building up. Now the steel is incoming. Beautiful steel. But heal. Uh, one hit. And beautifully done. Boromir, just like in the films, getting crippled. No sport, no Aragorn to save today. Lord's getting level 5. That's the worst possible outcome. The combos are still stolen under the control of the Isengard player. Lord is gonna get bullied and taken down. There comes the lightning sword from the Gandalf. And they are just peeling. Now, that was quite unlikely that, you know, Saruman was evil, barely able to survive. There comes the freezing rain. No more leadership for you, my friend. That means Gandalf's time to shine. Gandalf is going inside the jeans. And for whatever reason, using the Easter light, not the blast. Okay. He was Eastering some of the combos. Blast is going to miss the target. Against good players, it's very hard to land a beautiful blast because they will keep moving. They will can keep you distracting. Parami is coming from this other location. Theorin getting level 3. Surprisingly close for the glorious charge, but the outpost will be taken and the battle will be won. By the Isengard Gondor duo. Very good, very good, very good. He's gonna go for Legolas, not for Aragorn. I think Aragorn would have been a better choice because Lego is only level one. Lego is still not bad to snipe heroes like, you know, Gandalf, Faramir, Saruman, obviously, in Lourdes. He's a hero killer. He's shooting very fast and his damage should not be underestimated, especially when he gets some levels on him. He will hit very hard. Now, this Gondor needs Gandalf. He's gonna use the industry on his allies Blacksmith. Now he's gonna print money there. I don't I don't think Gondor needs the money to be honest. I think he has lots of money. He actually doesn't. 
Only Galvin, the gunner player, is kind of rich because he was saving up for Gandalf. Gandalf will cost you 6,300 in total. And here's the power points for him. That's pretty good. Now, Gandalf is going to be a game changer here. Not because of his potential to go in, but he can deny the enemy Gandalf to go in. I think you can't really go in unless you deal heavy damage to the enemy combos because there is a Lourdes who will eventually save the cripple for your Gandalf. But you can keep Gandalf behind your combos to give additional armor leadership to make them beefier and tankier. And whenever the enemy Gandalf comes close, you can Easter him instantly. So your Gandalf will deny the enemy Gandalf to go inside the jeans. Outpost control, double siege, going for the ramps. Now the combos are rotating with Theodine, Paramir. Remember, Boromir is dead. He didn't, he didn't even revive him. And it's Gandalf the Grey Boys. I think he want to go for the Eagles. That's why he's not choosing the PowerPoint from the spell book. The ram is going to be destroyed. Faramir! Boom! Insta level 2 for, for Legolas. Now it's going to be dangerous. The hordes are rotating, but there is a Gandalf who can blast them. He should be blasting them. What is he doing? Don't give him a trample chance like this. Power points are rising to the sky. There comes the glorious charge. Boom, 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 chakalaka. But there are just too many pikemen, too much damage, damage leadership. Glorious charge makes you beefy, tanky, but not immortal, not immune to damage. The ram is sieging in the meantime, the part of the wall. They are disengaging. Gandalf is still up on the field. The game is holding. There comes the lightning sword. Beautiful, beautiful. Look so much magic is happening in this game. Holy guacamole. Seven power points in total. The Rams were able to break in. Now the glorious charge is on cooldown for the next, I don't know, one minute and something. You need Boromir back. Boromir is essential, but he was level eight. So it's going to take you two minutes and 30 seconds to get him revived, which is a very long time. When you are getting siege like this, every second matters. Rain is still on cooldown for the next one minute. But the second Rain is available, they can go inside and they don't need to be frightened of anything. But without Rain, it's kind of tricky. Because Boros' leadership with Aragorn and also Faramir Gandalf is going to be, you know, pretty strong too. Oh, he's going to cripple? He's gonna miss the cripple. Kill Lords, kill, 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 kill. Lords didn't hit the cripple, but now Ganaf can go inside the jeans. A boom, chakalaka. Insta fireball, land. Uh, he's gonna. Ganaf is dead. This Ganaf is gonna also die. He's gonna use the bubble, 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 bubble. No. Both Ganafs are dead at the same time. Rain is cooking. Rain is reloading. Beautiful commitment into the castle. Destroying the wear in the stage two. That's the primary target right there. Rain, 10 more seconds, 10 more seconds for the rain. But the Gondor Knights are already inside the base. Boromir is trying to defend, but they have too much tankiness now with all of that shenanigans. The, the Ballista is going to be destroyed by Aragorn. It's pretty good. Rohirrim, level 10, ladies and gentlemen. But half of the base of Gondor has been already taken down. Boromir is still alive, though. He's level 8. Some Rangers are happening over here. Gavin didn't use any power points for whatever reason. He's not using his eagles, he's not using his kind of divide power point, nothing. That comes to Forgondor from Boromir. Boromir and Aragorn side by side, just like in the films, that comes to Horn of Gondor, but they are immune to the, to the fear, they are, they are level 6. Now it's gonna finally choose to summon the eagle specials, and Legolas has been taken down too from the Rohirrim special summon. Eagles will clear up this, what's remaining, power points for Gavin are rising to the sky. The combos are still remaining, level 6 combo over here. And also level 4 combo over here. That's pretty good. Aragorn against Boromir. Aragorn will be the victorious one. That's pretty good too. And the thing is, Gavin, because of the pillage of... of um, say it, of uh, Boromir, he was able to get lots of cash from this battle. He has 6k, so he has enough money to rebuild the base. That's pretty important too. And maybe they can go for a siege here from this location. 8 power points in total. Aizen is up to 13.5. Uh, Ryan has five power points after the Rohirrim special summon. He can go for the Eagles. One more power point needed for that one. And Latino has six power points. He can go for the ends. 
or he can save one more power point to go for the cloud break which might be a better choice beautiful trample with the speed of the palantir they are zooming all around the map but this is com very strong combo destroying the Tita will deny them a lot of time that's pretty good the horses are quite tanky with the shields and heavy armor they will destroy another level three furnace i mean blacksmith it's a very valuable structure it can't be replaced by any other structure it's gonna go down yeah it's gonna go down okay now what rohan could eventually do is go for the ends and siege the gondor make like three for rohirrim but he's kind of broke too rohan is not very rich he was losing his legolas was level seven by the way but his glory is charged you know so glory is charged with like four rohirrim you break two parts of the wall with the ends you can actually finish off the castle in literally no time literally no time there comes the eagle summon now from the opposite gondor player they are fully committing on the beast from gondor and the beast is exposed the Tita will be the target once again the rohir marches what can they do against such reckless heat the ends will be seven from the rohan for defensive purposes the Tita has been taken down for the third time there comes the gandalf lightning sword catching only one of these ends and they are immune to the trample damage. They can't be hurt by the Porcupine Formation Pikeman. Easter will one shot them though. Easter a beautiful shot. Two shot, uh, killing with two. And AOD has to be used now from Gavin to defend his castle. But losing units, remember, will give Isengard also power points as he will lose this Pikeman, lose his heroes. He will get closer and closer for his potential Balrog, which is definitely capable of defeating and destroying this entire castle or what is left of it now they need to take down this outpost to just buy a bit more time the pikemen are running it down into the eot power points are rising to the sky was he able to steal any of these no he wasn't able to he wasn't able to steal any of these fireball but now this saruman is actually exposed the cripple will hit lord uh Theorin. And now the glorious charge is over. It means Lord will do what he can do the best. Now full commitment, but blasting, boom, chakalaka, boom, boom. <laughs> That's juice. Or 17 and a half power points collected for Isengard. Gondor has one power point after the Eagle Special Summon. He also went for the Great Company. Latino has four and a half. He needs five and a half for his own EOD. And Gondor Eisen combination. Good and evil, boys. And Gavin has lots of power points, but he has no army. He has zero out of 200 available command points. He has zero resources. He can only revive his Gandalf. That's all he can do because he was rebuilding the beast. But remember, the Siege Wars is still remaining under the control of Isengard. So he can go for one more ram. That's the plan. He can just easily break the part of the wall one more time. And the beast is super open. Only one, two level three, level three blacksmiths are remaining on the field. And the level one blacksmiths are very squishy buildings. They have only 1,500 HP. So they can... And will be destroyed in no time. There is a Legolas who should be, you know, careful. There's a Ganov who can use Istari or Lightning Sword on you. But there comes the Ram. A spear throwing the Ram will insta get crippled for this. He's trying to buy some time. And he will be able to save the part of the wall for now. But he's losing so much stuff in exchange. Eoma has been taken down. Lots of Rohirrim have been taken down. And most importantly, He's feeding more power points to Isengard. He has no fire arrows yet. Archer range, still level one. Boom! It's really hard, very hard trying to destroy this ram, but it won't be happening. Now they can go inside the jeans. Legolas came here to save the day, and he's gonna use the arrow volley to catch up these two heroes. Saruman and Lords. Legolas is on a killing spree. Double kill for the young prince of the Mirkwood Elves. Now, look to damage in return. Pew, 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 hero killer, pew, hero killer, hero killer, hero killer. Legolas, Legolas, Legolas. But there comes the Balrog of Morgoth. What is this game, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> go, go, go. Darkfire will not avail you, Flame of Wudun. Okay, now the Eagles are hurting him a little bit. Don't underestimate that. But without EOD, your chance of killing this dude hmm, is pretty low. Beautiful breath fire, destroying five blacksmiths and going for the last building. Pew! Double kill on the Eagles too with the whip. <laughs> this is 
Oh my god, Theoden is running it down. Iconic moment. Gavin has been defeated. Gondor Isengard, boys. What a performance. What a team play. What a deserved victory. GG, well played. I hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.